So finally, we're getting started with the Python series. Here's the thing, we're not going to code just yet. Because one of the things that really confused me at the beginning was all the different libraries that are there, which ones should I learn, what they do. It was like, oh, it took me forever to do that mental map. So I'm going to give that to you from the get-go because it's a lot easier than to learn. So we're going to learn which libraries are available, which libraries I've picked to learn, but there are obviously a ton more that you can also choose. And we're going to also talk about the project that we're going to build to learn Python. I'm so excited about that. It's going to be so much fun. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So when you start learning Python, a lot of names are going to come at you. You're going to hear Python, NumPy, Matplotlib, you're going to hear Seaborn and TensorFlow, and really the list never stops. So I was actually quite confused in the beginning, like, where are all those things? What do they do? And which ones should I learn? And it took me quite a while to actually get a mental map of how everything works. But I've actually, this is how I understand it so far. It might change in the future, but Python is obviously the, the language that you use to uh, write your programs or do data science. And then you have different libraries. They are basically like packaged code to do different things. So for data transformation or data work, you have, for example, uh, NumPy, you have Pandas, you have uh, SciPy, and there's a ton more just to you know, manage and work with the data. Uh, you have then for AI TensorFlow, you have Keras, you have PyTorch, a ton more. Then when it comes to data visualization, you have Matplotlib, you have Seaborn, you have Plotly, you have Bouquet, you have Pandas has some visualization layer. I mean, it, it is so wild. So which one should I, you learn and what they do? Something that you're going to discover quite quickly is that Python, Python is a very uh, flexible language. You can do the same thing in many, many, many different ways. And, you know, people have created libraries for everything, so you could have like 20 libraries that do the exact same thing. And there is a, obviously a strength of the language, but it also adds an enormous complexity to it. So when I was trying to learn data visualization with Python, one day I will get, you know, for, let's say that you want to create a bar chart. So one day you will find a solution for Seaborn, another day for Matplotlib, another day somebody will give you something for Pandas, and it's just confusing because they are all using different methodology to actually go to the same thing. So I, I, I learned quite quickly that that is not going to work for me. I cannot just pick any library, copy-paste the code, because I, I will not truly learn. Um, so I decided that I need to pick a set of libraries that I'm going to learn very well, and then once I learn them, I can obviously learn something else if it's faster and whatever. So for, for example, for data visualization, I picked Matplotlib. Why? So Matplotlib is the data visualization library in Python, and Seaborn and the other packages are built on top of Matplotlib. The problem that I have, you know, some a lot of you have been asking me, like, hey, are you not going to show how to work with Seaborn? I think that learning Seaborn is a disadvantage rather than an advantage. So what Seaborn does, as far as I understand it so far, is it's a high, they call it a high-level language so or, or library. So it, it picks a few of the visualizations that people normally do and has done it in a way that it integrates very well with Pandas. And you very, very quickly can create something that people call it beautiful. I don't think the Seaborn charts are beautiful. I think you need to configure them as much as a Matplotlib uh, library or graph. So I don't think that is a good reason, but you can definitely do things faster. You just drop the column and then boom, you have a visualization, right? With Matplotlib, that's not always the case. But there's just a few that you need that you will be able to do. Sometimes you cannot access all the elements of the chart because of the way that Seaborn was configured. And 
at the end you will have to go to Matplotlib. So if you have to learn Matplotlib no matter what, how about you learn Matplotlib and skip all these other high-level libraries that you then can use afterwards once you know, right? Once you know the basics and the foundation. So I'm going to, with data visualization for now, do only Matplotlib. Obviously there are other useful data visualization libraries that we should probably look into, but for now, just Matplotlib, nothing else. When it comes to the AI leg, I'm not going to do any AI deep learning, machine learning stuff. It's just too complex to get into that from the get-go. We're going to learn Python first and data visualization and data transformation. So when we go to the data transformation part, I have two libraries. So it is NumPy and it is um, Pandas. So I was asking because Pandas is built on top of NumPy. So I was thinking that it, maybe it's the same as Seaborn and Matplotlib. Maybe I can just learn NumPy and skip Pandas altogether. Happy to do that if it works. I'm not sure it does work. I, I haven't done my, my mental map on that. It's not really clear. The way I understand it so far is that Pandas is like Power Query. So it allows you to um, get the data in a tabular format, mix data types, and then you can just pivot it and pivot it, group it, add, remove, you know, all the stuff that you do in Power Query. When it comes to NumPy, I think for me it's like DAX for now at least. So it is super quick, you do calculations there, and calculations that you would do in Pandas would be very slow comparing if you do them with NumPy. So I'm thinking in my head for now that Pandas is part of query, NumPy is DAX, right? So then we have Python as the overall language. We have uh, Pandas as part of query, NumPy as DAX, and then Matplotlib as our visualization engine. And by removing everything else, the complexity of Python has decreased enormously, enormously. So if somebody, if I'm Googling something and nobody is giving me the answer in Matplotlib or in Lumpo in Pandas, I figure it out myself, like seriously, I'm, I'm at that point. So I don't want to know anything about any other stuff. Once we learn that well, I think it would be quite fun to, you know, look into the AI part of it and see what we can figure it out, if we think that is fun or not, I'm not sure. And also with the data visualization, go to animations and do apps and things like that. So there's a lot, of, a ton more or a bigger world that we could explore. But I'd like to keep things smaller so we can learn the foundation and then expand. Okay, so those are the languages, or the libraries that we're going to learn. So how are we going to learn? Oh, this is so, it's going to be so much fun. So here's the thing. To learn, we're going to build the project together. And the project is going to be a game. We're going to create a game where the user has to solve a crime. <laughs> You're probably thinking like, okay, why, why are we doing a game? Here's the thing. Creating a game in Python requires you to know all the fundamental stuff about Python. So it requires variables, functions, loops, uh, you know, object-oriented programming. It, it, it is the good stuff. That's why, you know, when you're looking for Python examples to learn, a lot of people do games. It is because it, it just uses the fundamental stuff from Python and then you learn it very well. So I think it's perfect. The crime-solving part is perfect because then we are going to solve a crime using data, which means that we're going to use Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib to help guide the users through the clues so they can solve the murder. So we learn Python, we learn NumPy and Pandas, and then we learn Matplotlib while creating a game. How cool is that? It's just going to be fantastic. Now, I haven't built this, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I, I've built a little bit, but I've, uh, I haven't built it yet. I'm, I'm building it as I go. And I'm seeing that if I'm not careful, it gets complicated 
quite fast. And um, I worry a little bit about it because I ask you what your level is. I ask you everywhere on, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And you told me that 50% of you are beginners, like never used. Not beginners, but like I said, I never touch Python. So it worries me that it gets too complicated too fast. So next week, we're going to spend a little bit of time on the foundation. For those of you that have never touched Python, like, you know, making sure that you install it and then having you work with, we're going to work a lot with Jupyter nodes. So getting you familiar with Jupyter nodes, like easing it in a little bit. And then I will be checking in on you every now and then to see, okay, are you following along? Should I slow down a little bit? Should I go into a topic in more detail? Or yeah, yeah, just to make sure that I'm not doing it too fast. I am a beginner too, obviously, but Python is clicking for me. So I worry that I it will go too fast and maybe I miss explaining things that, and I lose you along the way. I don't want to do that. So that's the plan. So next week we will get you introduced to everything and then we start building the game uh, already the next week, obviously. But, you know, I, I think you, I need to get you started first. So this is how I'm thinking about approaching this. I, I'm going to give you, I want you to build it with me. I don't want you to look at me building it. You can do that too, obviously, but it, you're going to learn more if you build it yourself too. So what I'm going to do is, when possible, I'm going to give you the theory of it, of the parts that we need to build the game, and then I will let you build it. And then the next day, or the next week, I'm going to build what we said we were going to build, and then give you the next bits. Sometimes it's going to get a little bit too tough for letting you build everything so we will build it together but then you will put the game together yourself so you will always have something to do uh, either you build a part of the game or you put the game together right and i think that's the best way for you to also practice not just watch me do something <laughs> i think you learn more if you actually code it yourself and then i will check in every now and then maybe do a live every week or every other week to see how you guys are doing, if there's something that we need to do more of before moving on, and then always checking on you to see that you are following along. So next week, as I mentioned, we will first solve the murder. You need to know what the murder is and how to solve it in order to actually build the game. And then we're going to uh, do the the basic basic stuff. This is Jupiter. This is how you work in Jupiter nodes. You know all the all that good stuff, and then we will do the first bite of building the game. It's so much fun. It's so much, it's it's just ridiculous <laughs> how fun this is. It. So let me know what you think about the project. What you think about the structure? I mean, your thoughts about these. Let me know if you're going to join. I'm so looking forward to do this. I really hope that you join me on this journey because we are going to learn a lot. We're going to have a lot of fun. And at the end of all of this, you're going to have build your own game that you can play, that you can give to your children and they can play. They can learn about data when playing a game that you build. Like, how cool is that? Or your mother or your girlfriend or, you know, whoever you want to show the game to. So cool. So cool. Okay. So enjoy your weekend. Make sure you install Python now, okay? So install it. <coughs> if you don't want to install Python, Google Collab. Go around, do some digging so you're ready for next week. I will handheld you next week, but then, you know, then we're going to go, okay? Okay, stop talking. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.